the title of this video is nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. I like to keep my videos, you know, around 18, 20 minutes long. Uh, but this is a sermon, parts of a sermon that I have preached in a few places, in a few different churches. Uh, I'm looking at a couple passages and looking at the comparison of these passages. In Luke 9, verse 50, in 49... Uh, the, John the Apostle, they came across somebody who was casting out devils, but he wasn't a follower, quote, a follower, or in the camp with Jesus Christ. And this is a typical reaction. Nine, Luke 9, verse 49, John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with us. So he wasn't in our camp. And here's Jesus' response in the next uh, passage, next verse. He says, forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Okay, in Luke 11, here, here's a statement he says in Luke eleven twenty three: He that is not with us is against us. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Well, those, those statements seem contradictory. And somebody who is adamant, uh, who has a prejudice against the Bible, maybe they're a Bible phobe or something, will jump all over those passages and say, Oh, oh look at that, the contradiction. Jesus contradicted himself. Uh, but but uh, you need to look at the context of the statement, keep the statement within the context, and discover a uh, thought, a great thought, that a person can pattern their life after. Okay, so these statements are recorded twice in the Gospels. Okay, Matthew 12 is the uh, other quotation of the Luke 11 passage where Jesus said, He that is not with me is against me. Okay, where, and then in Mark 9, verse 33 in, in context, is the passage where Jesus said, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Okay, so you look at those passages in light of the Word of God. In one case, 9 out of 10 ain't bad. Okay, where in Luke 9, you don't have to agree with me, you have to agree with me 100%, uh, you know, I can learn from you. He that is not against us is for us. So, okay, if you got 9 out of 10 ag agreements, uh, hey, no problem with me. And then the other passage in Luke 11, 9 out of 10 ain't good. Now, if you don't like the English, nine out of ten isn't bad. And the other one, nine out of ten is bad. Luke eleven twenty three. he that is not with me is against me. Okay, and some folks who say, well, it sounds kind of like he's insecure there. Well, in the other passage, he that is not against us is for us. So which one's which? Okay, and in basketball, nine out of ten ain't bad. Okay, you get to a free throw line, guy make, shoots 10 free throws, and he makes 9 out of 10. Man, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yes, Serena, I, I personally am, is a basketball guy. As you can see in the back, I got a basketball back there. And when I shoot 100 free, throw, free throws, uh, you know, I expect myself personally, I'm, you know, I want 95 or higher. 95, 96, 97, you know, that's me personally, but I don't expect that from anybody else uh, that we play a basketball with. But in bowling, it for me, bowling, I usually get, nine, you know, often I do 9 out of 10 in bowling. In bowling, you do 9 out of 10, you're going to end up with a score of 90 out of 300. That That's not real good. Oh, in basketball, 9 out of 10 is good. In bowling, 9 out of 10 is bad. Okay, and so how do we analyze these statements? Well, you look at the context. And if you look at the context, he's going to give you, uh, the Lord is giving you two reactions in two separate relationships. 
Okay, if you look at the Luke 9 passage where he says, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. This is a reaction with people. Okay, an individual. Flesh and blood. In the Luke 11 passage, he that is not with me is against me. That and, and the Matthew 12 is the parallel. That is a reaction to spirits. Okay, that two different reactions. And um, the first one, I'm going to look at the reaction with people. Okay, the reaction with people where Jesus said, forbid him not for he that is not against us is for us. In other words, a gracious reaction with people and their knowledge of truth or their beliefs of truth. Okay, is a gracious reaction. You know, people, Christians are funny things, I think. Where you don't agree with me 100%, I don't, I don't like you. Uh, I mean, uh, you need to sort of kind of grow up a little bit. But in Mark 9, verse 50, here's what uh, Jesus Christ said. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, and have peace one with another. Okay, so salt in the Bible is a reference to convictions or your beliefs. Okay, and just getting in the Bible, you would develop some uh, beliefs. Okay, and please don't, don't limit your beliefs to a small set of fundamentals because God is infinite. Okay, so in, in, the, in the Christian world, if a person has 10 beliefs and, okay, he's practicing or believes these 10, and then somebody else who's a Christian has 10 beliefs, but the 10 don't match, the usual reaction is they judge each other. And, and my 10 is more holy than your 10. Come on, the Bible's got infinite information and ideas. It ought to have a gracious reaction. So you have salt in yourselves, okay? So for me personally, in when I'm shooting free throws, I expect myself, in my uh, ability to shoot, is 95 out of 100 or 9 out of 10. But I don't expect that from somebody else. And I will encourage them. They get 7 out of 10. Hey, that's pretty good. 8 out of 10, that's pretty good. Okay, now in baseball, three out of ten is pretty good. Guy at the, at the plate batting three hundred, man, he that's pretty good in baseball. In bowling, it's not though. Okay, and so in dealing with man, we ought to have a gracious reaction uh, about belief systems. Okay, for example, ideas, thoughts, doctrines, beliefs. Uh, It's like food. Here's food for thought. You ever hear that saying? Food for thought. You see, ideas, beliefs are like food to the soul. And nine out of ten ain't bad. You go to somebody's house and they got ten different items at the meal and you gripe or point out your disagreement with one out of the ten. I would hope that that party runs you out the door and say you ingrate. And I got to, you know, kind of tell you what's wrong with this person. You know, like it's almost human nature where, so, oh, this guy preached a pretty good sermon, but, but I don't agree with him here. Well, (laughs) write your opinion on a three by five card and uh, I'll give it to somebody who cares. But nine out of ten ain't bad with people. Baptists are kind of a funny lot of people. Fundamental Baptists in particular. Like they, they think that they've got, you know, the, the secret to all truth. Uh, Baptists do not hold, <laughs> do not have a hold on truth. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 shows that all knowledge is found in Jesus Christ. Colossians 2, verse 2, there that their hearts might be comforted being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's found in Jesus Christ. 
I have found from experience that, uh, you know, uh, many fundamental Baptists, they think they got a hold on truth, and a lot of them a bunch of little narcissists or bullies. Sure, I, you know, I, we got Baptists on our church door, but uh, hey, if there's some Baptist ideas that disagree with the Bible, uh, it's going in file 13 as far as uh, we're concerned. Bible first. Okay, you know, most of the cults are filled with, like JWs or whatnot, are filled with ignorant Baptists, or they at least were Baptists at one time. And so uh, in this uh, walk in the Christian faith, man, you're trying to learn <clears throat> ideas of an infinite God. In Acts 20, <clears throat> Paul said in verse uh, 27, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So you should be able to learn the truth from any source, from anyone, <clears throat> and have some uh, discretion to be able to pull the truth out of something that may not be truthful, as the whole body goes. So uh, in this uh, video or the next one, I'll give you some of the sources that I've learned uh, truths from that may surprise a lot of people. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Anybody who was uh, went through the public school system, I, I am a bona fide gadget of uh, low high school. It's a public school in our area, uh, and so I, I, you know, I went from K through twelve public high school, and then after I got a high school, went to a, two two separate Christian colleges, and after I got out of those, I realized <laughs> I wasn't taught much Bible. Now, in fact, my public high school, uh, you know, I'm ashamed to tell you that uh, not all of my teachers were Bible believers. In fact, I don't think any of them were. And in fact, the, the high school that I went to had a, you might surprise you, a Bible character for a mascot. That's right. Yeah. Separation Church and State wasn't in our school. No, we had a Bible character for our mascot. You say, oh, what Bible character? Uh, the devil. <laughs> That's right. My public high school, our mascot was the low red devils. In my basketball warm-ups, uh, at the bottom of the black warm-up pants was flames <laughs> portraying hell. Yeah, that's a, that's a high school. And, you know, I learned some good things in the school. I learned some raunchy things, but I learned some good things. Am I supposed to throw out all the good that I learned just because uh, none of my teachers were Bible-believing Christians. A few of them professed Christianity, but none of them were Bible-believing Christians. No, you had to weed out the truth from the air. If I limited my beliefs, uh, you know, to I had to be a Bible believer, man, I <laughs> wouldn't have much teachers throughout. You know, if I look at, you know, looking back and my Christian college experience, the pastor of the school I attended, you know, from his own daughter's testimony, the guy was a full-fledged narcissist. I mean, <laughs> were I to throw out everything I learned in Bible school? One, one of my teachers in Bible school uh, it, is in jail right now. Another one died in jail. I mean, this guy was, you know, by the, the pastor of the college, says that this guy was the greatest Bible teacher in, you know, in, of the age. And he's, he died in prison serving a, over a hundred-year sentence of abuse to a daughter. Now, this guy, I probably have heard him 20 times say a great statement what you do with the Bible determines what God will do with you. Now, that is a great statement. Am I going to throw that statement out because this guy turned out to be a two-bit punk? No, that's a great statement. What you do with the Bible does determine what God does with you. Just because that Bible, that guy's life didn't match up so hot. Uh, doesn't mean I'm going to throw that statement out. 
I mean, there's another one of the, the teachers in this school should be in prison, but it's not. But I learned some good things. I learned some things that I had found, discovered later that weren't true. But I'm not going to throw everything out. I think the saying is you don't throw out the baby with the bath water, the dirty bath water. And so you learn to realize that uh, truth is truth no matter who says it. Be it a good man, be it a bad man, or he turns out to be a bad man. You look at the words that a person says. Food for thought. Now, if you, if you feel in your heart, well, i got to tell you, I, I agree with a lot of this guy says, but I don't agree with. Who really cares? Take the truth from any source that you get it. That's a gracious reaction with people and their knowledge of the truth or their set of beliefs. Okay, and so, uh, you know, the t standard idea is if I like this person, then I'm going to accept what they say. If I don't like this individual, then I'm going to... You got to actually divorce the idea or your thoughts of the personality of that individual and the truth. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23 about the Pharisees. He said this, verse 3, <clears throat> All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Observe, yeah, that's right. And do, but do not ye after the works, for they say and do not. I tried. Right. See, now, who, who were the Pharisees? Some of those Pharisees were flesh and blood men like Nicodemus, but many of them were devils masquerading to be man or men. And, and Jesus said, do what they bid you. Observe and observe and do. Okay, Josiah is an example of the standard uh, attitude of people with the idea of truth. In 2 Chronicles 35, now Josiah was a good friend with Jeremiah, okay? And Josiah had the last great revival that Judah had before Babylon came and conquered them. And he got himself in a... In a problem at the end of his life, a sad thing. Second Chronicles 35, 20 says, And after this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, uh, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carmishes of by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. Now, Josiah should not have done this. Okay, and in verse 21 it says, And he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? So, the Egyptian king sent a message to Josiah. Well, I, man, I'm not fighting with you. And he said, I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. So Josiah meddled in a, another nation's war. Shouldn't have done it. For God commanded me to make haste. So this pagan Egyptian king said, God commanded me to do this. And he says, forbear thee from, from meddling with God. Who is with me that destroy thee uh, not? Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might go with him. And he hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Okay, if you read the story, Josiah should not have been there. And here is a pagan king of Egypt that God spoke through to Josiah. Josiah rejected the words because it came from a pagan king. This pagan king, is said, the scriptures say, he spoke from the mouth of God. You might be surprised who God speaks through. That you might be surprised where you find the truth. Hey, man, a broken watch is right twice a day. Josiah didn't consider the words. He considered the personality. 
And Josiah is a good man. God worked through Josiah, and, and, and a lot of great things happened during his uh, reign. But sadly, at the end, he didn't recognize the truth became it because it came from somebody that he didn't think should be, would be speaking the truth. And so, hey, a gracious reaction with people and their knowledge of the truth. Nine out of ten ain't bad. Nine out of ten ain't bad. And here's the benefit when you can do this. When you can look at the words in spite of the personality. If the listener desires the truth, the speaker is humbled because you desire the truth, not the speaker. If the listener dislikes the speaker, but yet is willing to accept the truth, the listener is humbled when he or she accepts the truth in spite of the speaker. Okay, so this idea is a gracious reaction toward people, and 9 out of 10 ain't bad.